Hey coaches, what's going on? It's Coach Tim here with another video. And guys, in this video, I'm gonna talk about the top five mistakes I've made as a youth football coach up to this point. And I'm telling you, like I made more than five mistakes, but I'm gonna give you my top five uh, mistakes, guys. And uh, before I get into this video, guys, do me a solid like and subscribe to my channel, guys. You'll be doing me a solid and help me reach more youth football coaches. And guys, you also helped me so much with coming up with more content because you guys are always reaching out to me, asking me questions. So, and I, and I really appreciate that. And uh, also, don't forget to get the free Beast Formation Playbook. Information on how to get that playbook is in the description box below. All right, guys, so let's talk about it. My top five mistakes as a youth football coach. Let's start here, number one. Number one, the biggest mistake I've made is not setting the standard high for my parents. One of the worst things you can do, man, is let your parents, give your parents um, leeway to do whatever they want to do. Because your parents can run over you so fast if you don't set high standards and expectations. Guys, I can remember picking up about 10 kids Loading it, loading them on the back of my pickup truck just to come to practice and the parents would be sitting on the porch just just minding their own business or barbecuing. So what I start doing is letting the parents know they are responsible for picking up their own kids and bringing them to practice as well. That's one of the standards that I set. So guys, like you have to create really high standards for the parents actually in my opinion harder and harsher standards for the parents than the kids because let's just be honest most of these kids they're not going to get the practice unless somebody bring them unless they you know stay across the street from the, par the park you're practicing at or something like that so make sure you make have high standards number two this is a big one guys make sure you choose good assistant coaches one of the biggest mistakes I've ever made as a youth football coach is picking the wrong assistant coaches who tried to sabotage my program. And I'm going to help you out a, a real quick on this. Just because somebody is your buddy don't mean that they're going to be a good assistant coach. Just because somebody is your friend or you went to high school with them, that doesn't mean they're going to be a good assistant coach. As a matter of fact, those are the ones who, in a lot of cases, you're going to end up <laughs> falling out with or bumping head with, with the most because they know you outside of football. And then when you're trying to, you know, be the head coach, they're not going to respect you as the head coach. And this is not always the case, guys. I'm not just, you know, this not a, you know, this doesn't like, it's not a one size fit all situation. However, I've seen it happen with me and I've seen it happen with so many coaches where teams end up getting split. Teams end up getting split for the simple fact that friends fell out with each other because somebody felt like that they can do something better and then they started another team and then before you know it, you got four or five new teams just from a bunch of buddies who don't, don't get along anymore. So make sure you choose some good coaches, some uh, people who respect you as the leader. That's the biggest thing. Get somebody who respects you as the leader. It's okay to get coaches who don't have a ton of football experience or coaching experience. One thing I do is I actually get um, dads or moms who are out there and they just watching and you can tell they're studying. And, and, and I get them and I ask them, you know, do you want to be a drill coach? And I start them off as a drill coach. They're not an assistant coach. They're a drill coach. They help with the drills. And then as time go by, I see how committed they are. Then I ask them, do you want to be an assistant coach? And then I get them certified and we go on. Everybody happy. That's how you solve that problem, guys. All right, number three. And this can be a huge mistake. Guys, don't wait too late to start recruiting kids or scouting kids, okay? To be honest with you guys, you should be building relationships with kids and parents 24 7 24 7 like because if you're in a competitive area like i am i'm in tuscaloosa where there's over 20 youth football teams 
in this county. So like you being out there and exposed and people knowing you and the kids knowing you and want to play for you and getting your former players to talk about you, that's going to be just like vital because it's so much talent, but there's only a few teams that grab up the best talent. And you want to be one of the best teams to grab up the best talent because let's just be honest, t t when you got talent on your team, it does make winning football games easier. I'm not saying that you can't win football games with less talent. I'm actually going to be making a video about that because, I mean, for me, my first year of coaching, we only had 13 players. And I wouldn't say we was the most talented program in the league. And we made it to the championship. We lost 13-6, but you can win with less talent. But when you got talent, it's just a lot easier. So go ahead and start recruiting now. Like, don't wait. Start recruiting now. And I know some of you guys like, well, you know, there are a lot of league restrictions and things of that nature in your area. Guys. League restrictions or not, you better be talking to these parents, talking to these kids, get them to know, like, and trust you so you can have a solid team going into the season. All right, guys. Number four, get you a good team mom. Like, I had a year where I picked, and this is early on in my coaching career now, you know, I got the first mom who act like they was interested. And, you know, I've had team moms who – have tried to steal money. I've had teen moms who are just toxic and just negative. Get you a good teen mom who can take the load off of you with water, Gatorade, administrative stuff, communications, that kind of stuff. Now guys, I'm an organizational guy. Like I'm big on organization and administration. So like it don't bother me, but some of you guys are not like administrative savvy at all. So you really need a good team mom who can help help you facilitate those things. And it's even better when you got a team mom who can help you with like fundraising and they love to do that kind of stuff. You know, like you get one of these moms that's like, you know, go to PTO meetings and always participating in school activities. They can make some of the best team moms because they want the program to be great. They help lift the quality of the program. So get you a good team mom. And the last and final mistake that I made early on was not getting help. Guys, I didn't get a lot of help. I was, I was, I thought I knew it all. I thought if I run these plays, it's gonna kill them this year. <laughs> and little did I little did I know that, you know, it's okay to ask for help, whether it's with coaches in your league or going on YouTube like you are now or wherever you're watching this and getting advice from coaches who, who have been there, done that. You know what I'm saying? That's trying to give back. And guys, I want, hey, look, every year, guys, I'm looking for coaches who I respect and I trust and I ask them for advice, insight on what they do. Because at the end of the day, we're doing it for the kids, right? End of the day, we're doing it for the kids. That's why, I mean, that's why I started Beast Out You Guys to help you guys with you with your football program so you can win more games and score more points. That's why you go to Beast Out You, get my free playbook, implement this stuff. Go on uh, Beast Out You, get my scoring formula, the scoring formula masterclass. It actually teaches you how to score more points, whether you want to run the beast or any other formation. Get that. And there's other courses that I'm finna drop in there. Like join Beast Out You is absolutely free. But ask for help, guys. It's so important. Because when I started asking for help, I was already winning games, but I started being undefeated. I started being undefeated, being difficult to beat when I started asking for help getting insider tips from different coaches and just making it my own according to my system. And that's, that's what you do. Take the beast, uh, the strongman beast offense playbook. Take it. You don't have to use the whole playbook. Take what works for you and your program and then maximize the skill, the, to, uh, maximize the talent and the, and the skill of your kids. 
and just watch it work. I guarantee you the playbook work. Take it and use it, have fun with it. All right, guys. So that's it, guys. And look, please go back. If you have to go back and listen to this video again to avoid these five mistakes that I was talking about, it's gonna, hey, it, it, these are things that can literally change the course of your season where you can have an undefeated team or not win any games. That's just the truth, guys. All right, guys, so this is Coach Tim with another video. Remember, be great, have fun, and beast out.